Hey everyone, Fi Farley here. It is uh, week six of the NFL already. Uh, man, we have some teams super underperforming, teams overperforming. It's been a fun season so far, and we are getting into the good weeks of NFL and especially of the betting side of it all. So I'm going to get into five plays that I have for you this week, uh, break those games down for you. And I'll do that in just one second first. So let me say thank you to subscribers. I appreciate it. And welcome to those new subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Follow my picks throughout the season. Follow my college football picks, NFL picks, and also, of course, MLB postseason picks as I've been picking all the way through the whole baseball season and into the postseason. Um, also, if you're in Las Vegas, if you're going to be around, uh, I'm going to be in Vegas this weekend. I'll be at the Palace Station. Feel free to come by, say hi. Uh, as long as these picks are winning, uh, feel free to come by and say hi. Uh, if they're not, I may not be in the best of moods. So uh, <laughs> keep it brief. But if they are, uh, have a beer, chat, and uh, it'd be good to see someone who's uh, been been chiming in here uh, on the videos throughout the season. So looking forward to this weekend. I really like it. As we look at Take a step back and look at the games. It's really interesting how Vegas has responded to the way the games are going. So the highest ever in the history of the NFL totals have been coming in in the 2018 season. Uh, what they say? The average game is now coming in at 40, 46 points a game, something like that. 46, 47 points a game. And now we're seeing it reflected in these totals. We used to never see totals like this uh, before in the past. We're seeing... A handful of games into the 50s, Bengals, Steelers at 54 and a half, uh, Buccaneers, Falcons at 57, um, Rams, Broncos at 53, Chiefs, Patriots, of course, at 58. Um, so some elevated nut totals that uh, create for some interesting dynamics, as well as we still get those that are hovering around the 40 point mark, but none in the 30s anymore. Uh, it's really interesting, Vegas responding to uh, all the overs that have been occurring uh, here in this uh, first five weeks. So uh, interesting on that. I do have one underplay uh, that I'm going to get to as my final pick in just one second. First, let's start with uh, the England game. Oakland Raiders and Seattle Seahawks are going to be traveling to England, uh, playing there at a 10 o'clock start Pacific time. Um Seahawks coming off the close loss to the uh, Los Angeles Rams at home, 31-33. Uh, the Raiders are uh, coming off a big loss to the Chargers, uh, where I thought that game would be a little bit closer as a five-point dog. Uh, they ended up uh, really, I, I just think the colors of the Raiders are going to continue to come out more and more while Gruden will have the Gruden effect on his team and get them up for each game. Uh, in the end, they're just not that good of a team, especially without Mac in the, in the, on the defensive side. Um, there's only so much that Marshawn Lynch can do and Derek Carr can do and, and Amari Cooper can do. Um, but, but then that's about going to be the, end, the extent of the uh, uh, Oakland Raiders at this point. So now we're going to hit the road, travel to England, and Seattle is going to be, I think, in a really good spot here to be able to have a, uh, uh, a win over the Raiders. Um, I'm going to lay the minus three here with the uh, Seattle Seahawks. Uh, they have Baldwin back. They have Lockett back. They have Bobby Wag Wagner back. Of course, Earl Thomas is out. Um, but getting those other key pieces, they are playing pretty darn good defense, as well as putting up 31 points against the Rams. You know Pete Carroll is going to have his uh, playbook dialed in against the Raiders. So, uh I don't think Raiders are going to be able to uh, uh, defend Seattle into the second half. They got their run game down. Their offensive line is starting to look pretty good for the Seahawks. Uh, they had a 100-yard rusher in this last game, Chris Carson. Um, and they got they have two running backs going uh, right now that are looking pretty good. So, uh, you know, look for the backfield of the Seahawks to uh, pound the football on the Raiders. And uh, for them to get the win, I'll lay the minus three. Give me the Seahawks. All right, game two, we got, speaking of, the Rams coming off that emotional win in Seattle, 33-31, probably a lot more difficult than they had expected. And tip my cap to the Rams to be able to get that win. But now they got to immediately move over to the Broncos and play up in Denver, which has been a difficult to play. Broncos have covered three of three games at home so far this season. Um, now they're getting in, of course, the uh, league-leading overall, pretty much unanimous, number one-ranked 
uh, Los Angeles Rams. However, the Rams have not played outside of California except for the quick jot up to Seattle this last weekend. Uh, before that, it was in Oakland. It was at home against Cardinals, at home against Chargers, at home against Vikings, and then up in Seattle, which is a tough place to play. But you could see they were behind in a lot of that game. Um, it had an effect on them. Now they got to go up to mile high. I don't think this is a very good spot. Denver's had an effect. Even when they played the Chiefs, it was a really close game. They had them on the run. Um, I think they're going to put some pressure onto the Rams. This is a bad spot for the Rams, and we're getting a touchdown in mile high. I'll take the touchdown. Give me the seven and the Broncos. All right, third game I have, Cowboys-Jaguars. So this is kind of interesting. There has been a theory out there in the sports betting world where you take the highest total and bet it over. And typically, by the way, this is in college football. Take the highest total, bet the over, and take the lowest total and bet the under. The idea behind that is that you can't make a total low enough for a game in which you know is going to go that low because it'll expose your hand. It'll show that if you really don't think a, a game is going to go over 32, if you put a 32 out there, you're just not going to get even money on both sides, whether it's sharp or public money. So they got to put it at least at 42, 43, 44. You know, for example, take a look at Florida LSU last weekend. Um, that would be an example of it. Uh, there's a handful of others. But I'm using that line of thought as I look at this. While all the totals are going up, take a look at the ones that are staying low. So one of which I'm going to pull out and I'm going to bet the under on is Jaguars Cowboys. Now for two reasons. The other ones have a one-sided dynamic to them. Um, for example, Bills Texans, both good defenses. Um uh, but they can have spurts of offense. But if we look over at the Jaguars and Cowboys, we have no offense and we have great defenses. So if we look at uh, team totals for um, for points per game uh, on the offensive side, uh, we have Dallas at number 30 at 16.6 uh, points per game uh, scored, and then Jacksonville at 26 at 20.4 points per game is what they are averaging. And then if we look at the defensive side, points given up per game, those are two of the top teams. Let's get it. Dallas number five, Jacksonville number three at 17.2, Dallas at 19.2. So no matter how you slice it, their average points per game, put them right about 35, 36, both offensive and defense. So no matter how you look at this, whether it's the offensive side against the other's defense, the defense versus the other offense, it's going to be 35, 36 points. Here we are at a total of 40 and a half. We're given an extra field goal of cushion. But all things said, when those two types of teams match up, this game is going to be somewhere in the 20s as a total. So I'm going to take the under Jaguars Cowboys 40 and a half. All right, let's go to the Panthers. So unfortunately for the Redskins, they're starting to get exposed as a uh, maybe not as good a team as we, we may have thought. As a matter of fact, a lot of the teams in the NFC East are getting exposed as not as good as we may have thought. Um, they're on a short week. They played against New Orleans. They got their butts kicked. And now they're getting the number one rushing team coming into town with the Carolina Panthers. The Panthers are a pretty darn good team. And they rush for... Let's see what they, they're rushing for now. I think it's 151 yards per game uh, on average. Sorting it by rushing totals. 154 yards per game right now, uh, average. Washington being the sixth best defense against the run. However, on a short week after getting their, their butts handed to them in uh, New Orleans, uh, I, I think... Carolina's going to control this one, dominate this one. We basically have a pick em here. You can get a plus, a little bit of plus money on the Panthers if you grab it early. Um, but I'm going to take the Panthers here in Washington, getting the win over the Redskins and a lot of smash mouth football, Carolina and Washington going at it. So last game I have is going to be the featured game Sunday night, Chiefs and the Patriots. So we all know what happened when the, P when the Chiefs went into uh, – New England and beat them early last season. It kind of sent a message out that they're for real and their rookies are going to stand out. Now we have Mahomes, we have Hunt, we got uh, um, 
uh, oh, what's his name? Hill, Tyreek Hill, uh, just playing fantastic, really, really well behind the coaching of Andy Reid. Um, we expect nothing less. They typically come out quickly. However, when you're facing Belichick, you can guarantee that he is going to make adjustments. The best adjusting coach uh, in the NFL and quite frankly, probably the best overall coach in the NFL. Um, you can expect him to shut Mahomes down and have uh, some defenders keying in on Hill and Hunt to shut them down as well. I can also expect to see the Patriots offense to stay on the field, little three and five yard passes. Uh, now with Edelman back out there, um, they're going to do a lot of deacon dunks to control the clock, keep Mahomes on the sideline. Um, and, and you can also expect the Chiefs to s- try and establish the run to keep Brady on the sideline. I think we're going to have a lot of uh, ball control, um, trying to maintain and manage this game. I think the total is set too high at 59. I'm going to give a little disclaimer on this one because I already mentioned it earlier. You take the lowest total, go under. Take the highest total, go over theory. Um, this is the highest total, but it's on the Sunday night featured game. I think a few too many points are padded into here. However, if that line goes up another point, up to 60, I may pass on this one. Um, I don't think I think it's going to start coming down. Uh, it's at 59 right now. And as of right now, my play is going to be Chiefs Patriots under just because I think the gameplay isn't going to justify a win uh, uh, and over that total. I don't think they're going to duke it out. I don't think they're either team. I don't think either team is interested in airing the ball out to quickly give the ball back over to the other offense, um, to the other quarterback and wear out their defense. I don't think either team is interested in that. Two smart coaches, two good quarterbacks. Um, I expect to see a lot of running, and I think this game is going to go easily under the total 59. So that's my take on it. Give me Chiefs Patriots under the 59. There you go. There's my five picks. Seahawks minus three. uh, Broncos getting a touchdown at home. Cowboys, Jaguars under the 41. Panthers uh, pretty pretty much a pick them on the road at Washington. And then Patriots Chiefs under 59. All right. Good luck, everyone, this week. If you got any picks that you like, throw them down in the comments. And again, please subscribe and uh, like the video. All right, see you again soon.